This video is a part of a free chapter from my new course, The Blendinator. Click the links in the description to learn more. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And in the last video, what we did was project two images onto the single object using two different cameras in Blender. And the first projection here is our projection one, and that's on the front corner here, getting the front face, the top, and the side. But if we rotate over here, you can see that it's just a single image being projected through the object. So in order to see the second projection, we actually have to switch our material to the second one. And now you can see we have the second one being projected onto that. But of course, when that happens, that image is also projected through the entire object. So even though we do have both of the projections lined up like we want, they're not being projected onto our object at the same time. And that is the purpose of this video. So the final result should look something like this, where we have projection one like this at the same time as projection two. So projection two is just taking care of the back face here and the side. And then everything else is being taken care of by the first camera projection. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, there are two main ways. The first one is to use completely different materials and assign the faces to those materials. And this method only works if you have well-defined faces and solid edges uh, like you see here. So this is just a rectangle box structure. So we can easily do this. So I'm going to start with projection one here, this map proj or project. And we have map proj two. So let's start with projection one. And then I can just click plus here and then add in the second one as well. And all we have to do now, because everything's set up like we need it, is to tell Blender which faces we want for this projection. So let's tab into edit mode and just select these two faces, select our project two, and then click assign. And then ta-da, we're done. And that is it. Now we don't have the bottom face here, so we'd have to do our bake and fix our UVs like we've done before. But if you don't need to see the bottom, then this is done. We've used both cameras to project onto one single object using two different materials that we assign the faces to. However, this might not work in every situation, especially again if you don't have well-defined faces and maybe you have a texture that bleeds over onto multiple different faces. So assigning them to multiple faces would just mess everything up. You'd see hard lines and all of that stuff. So the second method is to use one image. So we are going to add another image. Let's go to our baking workspace. You can also go to your shading workspace. It's the same thing, but we want to make sure we see our nodes here. That's going to be the most important thing. And then I'm going to make a little bit more room and then let's duplicate the first projection and we're going to call this project three. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the emission and plug this one right back in. It's essentially the same thing. And then I'm going to take both of these here, move them up a little bit, and then duplicate both of them down. And then we want to change this one to the second one, which in our case is 2B and then mod 2. So now if we switch those, you can see it switches it for us. And then I'm going to select this one and click this pin button here so that even if we select the camera, we can still see these. But now if I move that, you can see that's the only one being projected. But if I do this one, then it's this one that's being projected. Um, actually, both of them are because we still technically have, what we've done is we've added project three and two here instead of one and two. So I'm just gonna get rid of two because this method is to show how to do it on one material. So we just need to mix these two together. So let's control shift, right click, and then drag there. We got a mix node here. And you can see it's mixing half and half. Uh, remember that A is zero for the factor. 
So the factor always affects B. If B is completely zero, then we can see 100% of A. And then vice versa, 100% factor of B is 100% B. And 0.5 is just a mixture of them overlaid on top of each other. So that's not what we want. We want to actually tell Blender where we want each of these. And if you remember the order of operations, A is set down first on our canvas. So A is the bottom texture, and then B is the top texture overlaying on top of that. So we need to figure out where to put image B. And we can do this with a mask. I'm actually going to duplicate both of these up here like this, and then just get rid of this click new and then 1024 by 1024 is fine because actually we're going to use the same dimensions as we use for our bakes. So this one I'm just going to say O2B underscore mask and then we're going to use our flat UVs and that's important because when we start painting we don't want to paint through the image so we want to paint on our flat so nothing is overlapping. So let's switch over here to our O2B mask and then we can display, oh, no, nope. so if we tab into edit mode and select everything, you can see we're not using the correct UVs here. Well, we are with this mask, but we're not, they're not being displayed over here because remember, if you have this, we have to actually physically select this. This is important because we want this to be displayed like this over here when we paint, because we're going to paint on where we want the image B to be, the image B to be. Okay, so right now we just have a black texture that we're going to plug in to the factor. And if you remember, black is what? It is zero. So that means we have zero visibility of our second projection. But our first projection, we got 100% visibility still. Okay, now we can select our object, come to texture paint, and we want to make sure we're selecting the 2B mask to be painted onto. Now, sometimes when I select it here, oh, there we go. So sometimes it doesn't change and sometimes it does. So I don't know what makes it recognize that or refresh, but even if you select it here and it doesn't change up here, make sure you just select it from the dropdown. So we wanna make sure that is there. And we also wanna make sure we have the display texture paint UVs on and that those are the correct ones. Again, that's gonna be our flat here. We don't need to worry about the active render because everything that we have here for our UV maps is overriding our active renders. So just make sure this one is selected. Uh, and let's see, our plane is selected, but why can't I see my display UVs and I think it's because if we tab into edit mode we need to press A to select everything there we go and then tab back on object mode and this is what we have uh, but you keep switching to our paint texture so I'm gonna make sure that we have our 2B mask selected let's also come over here to our tool and I think the reason is this is the reason because we have this still set up for our clone and I don't want clone because we're not going to be painting a texture. We're going to be painting a black and white mask. So let's go to our draw. And I think that's why it kept flipping. And then I'm going to change this from single image to material and make sure to be mask is selected there. Now that should stay. And now we can start to paint. But of course, we want to paint on the back over here. And I think that we're ready, so we can just start to paint and look at that. We are now painting on there. Now, I got to be careful because I can also paint, you know, the top portion here from this projection. But I think I want to keep this projection for the first one, the first projection here. and. One way we can make sure that we're painting only on the places that we want to paint is use a paint mask. And that's really easy. Just tab back into edit mode and go into face select and select the faces, shift select the faces that you want. And just these two here, tab back into texture paint mode and come up to this button here and click paint mask. And you can see if I 
go out to the front and the sides, these are kind of grayed out. And that is because uh, I can't paint on those, even if I try. So it's going to just mask those out, but then I can come over here and just uh, start painting. Of course, I need to paint white here. And now it won't let me bleed over to the other faces so that this is going to be a lot easier for me just to quickly paint without having to worry too much about being too precise. All right, so there is our mask. So let's go ahead and save this out because right now it only exists in Blender. There's no source file, so save as. I'm gonna save it with our other paint and bakes. And now we can come back to our layout and take a look at our handiwork. We now have both cameras projecting two different images onto our object at the same time. And we can see this if we move one camera and we move the other camera, we can see we don't have to switch back and forth between materials. Now, of course, we don't have the bottom material here. Uh, so what we would have to do is do our bake and then adjust the UV maps and do a, a fix like we did before. But since we've done that before, what we can do instead is come back over to our baking. Um, instead of the first camera F spy projection, we can use our bake. So let's um, get our bottom here so that we can see the change. So if I change this to our bake two, which was our final bake, we need to also change this to our flat UVs. And there we go. Now we have the bottom face as well as all of the other ones. And we still have our back facing because it's still being mixed together with our 2B mask. And so now we have a perfect 3D asset with awesome materials, and it reflects exactly what the real world box of exploding kittens looks like, or at least for the most part. So this is how you can create a simple asset for 3D a game or digital additions to real world footage or product advertisement. So you can put this like on a pedestal or something, put a spotlight on there to make it really dramatic, give it a dark background, and then maybe even do an explosion simulation to get people excited about the game. However, as you know, we are gonna be using it to create real world lighting and reflections on the skull for the final render. So when you're ready, head on over to the next one.